it's Ani, we're at Coconut Chai, and I am with one of my favorite entrepreneurs out there right now, Sarah. Please introduce yourself. Oh, that's so kind. I'll hold you to that favorite. He said favorite. Um, Sarah Nguyen, I'm the founder of Nguyen Coffee Supply. I said one. Of okay, one of. Oh, cut, just cut that. I'm super excited you're here. I want to know, growing up, mm -hmm. what was the one dish that defined your childhood? This pork belly dish called tikka. It's just like a braised uh, pork belly and like a coconut juice. And it was with like eggs and it's just like really simple and easy to make and affordable. It's just like super comforting. So love that. Tikka. If you have to describe the food that you grew up eating mm -hmm. in three words, mm -hmm. what would you choose? At that age, I would describe the food I ate as stinky, delicious, mm. and different. Those feelings came up a lot with my food um, when I was a kid, especially in elementary school, because my mom was really like, you know, about nourishment and feeding as well. She didn't want me to eat um, the free lunches. So she would pack me school lunches and it was always like our leftovers. And this is like in the 90s, right? You're, you're, it wasn't, America was very different back then in the 90s, and in Boston, right? So I was just like, I would be so embarrassed to open up my lunchbox that I wouldn't even eat. But now, but now I'm like, yo, that was fire. I'm, I had Super. the best lunchboxes Super. in the I cafeteria. wish I had a lunchbox now. Like, I wish I had that right now. Talk about it, like I had pizza for lunch. Like, yeah. Did your mom ever have a, uh, like a crazy food myth? I had a Cambodian family who helped raise me when I was younger. The big food myth there was like, if you eat while lying down in bed, you turn into an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm, I'm curious too, like the philosophy of food mm -hmm. when you were growing up, how did that influence kind of how you eat today and how mm -hmm. you explore food today? My mom was really big on like we all eat together mm -hmm. and I remember like my dad would sometimes work late and like we would all be sitting at the dinner table and but like no one could touch anything until my dad came and joined us. And my dad was chilling, he was like, just eat without me, start without me, right? My mom was like, no. Wow. And I'm like, I'm so hungry, can we just eat? Please, dad said it's okay. But like, no, like she was adamant, we all eat together always. That stuck out to me a lot. And I think that informs a lot of like, how I break bread with people, you know? Like it's like the idea of like doing it together. Sure. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Oh, when I was really young, the first, I remember the first thing I wanted to be was an artist. No way. Do you feel like in a way you still are? Do you feel like I do. food yeah. is still in heart? Yeah. yeah. I feel like in my soul, in my heart, like I'm a creative and building a business, <laughs> I feel like I'm essentially creating something of, of my own vision like every day. Like that's the cool part of it for me. I would agree. Mm -hmm. um, I want to switch tracks a bit. Uh, I want to talk about travel. Okay. What's your favorite food city? Food city, um, definitely. I was gonna say like Vietnam, but mm, that's a country. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It could be a country. Okay, Vietnam, no bias, but because my family's like my dad's from the north, my mom's from the south, so I travel the whole country mm. all the time. The food just changes so much in each region. It's like almost like a different country in itself. It's so diverse in that way, yeah. the food culture there. And I don't know, it's just I just think Vietnamese food is so freaking delicious. Let's talk about Nguyen Coffee. Mm -hmm. Explain first of all the the name. I was down to two names. Is like Nguyen Coffee Supply, or like, but I was like, ooh, like, is that too polarizing? Will people be ready? Mm. I was like, it's gonna backfire on me. So then the other one was like, Tiger, Tiger Coffee, a Vietnamese coffee brand, because like, I'm a year of the tiger, and tigers are very, very strong and bold, like Vietnamese coffee. Yep. I'm like, that just feels more palatable. Like, I, I think Americans can like sure. grab that. Sure. But I was like, you know what, fuck it. Like, I don't care if America isn't ready. Like, I'm gonna help us be more ready by placing Nguyen Coffee Supply front and center. And that's gonna help push for representation and visibility. And it'll start a conversation where literally everyone from like you earlier or Drew Barrymore is like, how do you say it, yeah. right? Let's talk, oh, it's Nguyen. That's super dope. Talk about that initial like founder period for you a little bit. I was just like going through some old videos from like 2017, mm. 2018. And Ani, I was getting really emotional because I was like, it's videos of me and like my partner, like we were literally like filling coffee beans in my kitchen and like our apartment just stacked with boxes and videos of like us bringing like a wagon and USPS shipments to um, the post office. And like, mm -hmm. I was getting really emotional because I was like, that shit was so hard. Yeah. It was physically, mentally hard. And I think like, yeah, you have to really understand your why um, to endure those tough moments. Yeah. And for me, my why, my mission is to transform the coffee industry, mm -hmm. right? To build a better coffee industry that's really, truly rooted in diversity, inclusion, and cultural integrity. Someone said to me, the face of coffee in America is white. 
but the body of coffee is black, brown, and yellow. Mm. Because coffee is grown in Central South America, Africa, and mm. Asia. Yep. But why is it that we don't have a global brand that represents Crazy. the origin of coffee? And whether you're talking about Vietnamese coffee or Ethiopian coffee or Colombian coffee, how do we push the coffee conversation to be inclusive of the people and communities in the culture at origin, right? Yep. So. That's why I was willing to. That's what you were eating on those nights where the, <laughs> the bills were not getting paid. You were eating the why. Ah, the eating the yeah, why. Because I've been there. And, that's the and, motivation. But that's a really beautiful thing. And I think yeah. I'm happy you shared that because I want to touch on one thing. Is like when you talk about Max not credit cards, lugging five bags up the stairs, and people hear this, I don't think they understand exactly how hard that is, right? Mm-hmm. Like I remember because this space we transformed into like a fulfillment center in the mm-hmm. middle of the pandemic. Like it's like PTSD mm-hmm. in, in a lot of ways, right? And I think that. We hear these founder journeys, but I think to actually go through it and to get on the other side of it uh, is, it's hard to communicate with people who haven't done it, right? Truly. And, and so I, I commend you. I want to give you your flowers. I, I find you Me too. incredibly inspiring, mm-hmm. but I also think it's important for our audience to know, like, mm-hmm. it's hard. I talk about that story because that was my, that's my truth, my reality. However, I wouldn't necessarily encourage it for people. Right. Likewise. Because it actually... The bootstrapping journey, it's really always celebrated and glorified if you make it to the other side. And I'm still not even there, you know? The bigger story here is the reality that so many founders like us, especially founders of color, Mm -hmm. first gen, children of immigrants, there's a lack of access to capital. So we have to put ourselves at extreme financial risk to even try to attempt at our dreams. And I think that's a huge inequity in our side, which you're really Mm -hmm. talking about, not like, let's invest all my life savings. Like, that's actually not... A great journey. That's not cute. And that's not cute. That's not cute. It's not. It's not fair. Yeah. So I did it. That's my reality. It doesn't mean that I would encourage it because it's not. We shouldn't have to put ourselves at financial risk to yeah. attempt at our dreams. Yeah. Right. That's so real. I mean, we you know, just raised our round, uh, first time raising capital. Congrats. So thank, thank you. Yeah. Congrats to you too. Yeah. I don't want to get too much into she that. Is. But we did yeah. that. We did, we that. did that. I remember asking my dad some of the people that you went to school with. Like, are they you know doing well? Like, do you mind? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, floating this Mm -hmm. deck to them. And he was like, oh, I can't beg my friends for money. (laughs) And I was like, beg? I was like, I'm trying to make them money. Yeah. You know, but like that is such a, um, like, shift in in thinking and understanding the realities of of where we are, right? And it's Mm -hmm. it's such a generational, like, divide. And so, you know, I think there's a lot of similarities in our our come-ups, but at the same time, I think you nailed it, where it's like, that's not cool. Mm -mm. We do it because we... Had to, mm-hmm. but that's not cute. My parents as well, they have a lot of immigrant parents. That, like, they raised me to be like, don't ask people for anything. Don't bother people. Don't burden people. Don't ask. So then it becomes hard to advocate for yourself. Then, like, when you're out in the real working world, you're learning, like, actually, this cultural upbringing do? is actually not the way to navigate this capitalistic society. Like, you got to ask. you got to advocate for yourself. you got to put yourself out there. Yeah. So that is definitely something to navigate as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. unlearning. And learning was mm-hmm. the key to so much learning, right? Yeah. And that's like a whole different topic. Yeah. We'll do another one of these. I things. know, CBC part what's two. What's up? Um, <laughs> what's the biggest misconception that people have about New England Coffee Supply? Our company is all about elevating Vietnamese coffee, mm. but more specifically, we are huge champions of the robusta bean. Yes. Um, so in the coffee world, there are two main varieties: Arabica and robusta. And robusta has explicitly been excluded in the specialty coffee community. Mm. Vietnam is not only the number two producer of coffee in the world, okay. Vietnam is also the number one producer of Robusta. Okay. So our mission is to elevate Vietnamese coffee, but beyond that, because Vietnam is the number one producer of Robusta bean, we are, we are actually changing the narrative around Robusta. Because if we can change the narrative around Robusta, we can generate an awareness and an appreciation for Robusta coffee here, yeah. that will actually unlock opportunities for Robusta farmers all around the world. And you know, I'll be, I'm very, very proud to say that through a lot of our advocacy and our storytelling and our reframing. Top of 2022, the New York Times published an article, Food Predictions of 2022, and he said, Robusta rising. No way. <laughs> yes way. What? Let's go. <laughs> Changing the narrative. Let's go. Wow. Yeah. I got two more questions for okay. you, because I feel like if I learn any more, I got to go to school. <laughs> I got to pay you for my credits if I learn any more today. Question for you is, as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. what's a value that you just will not compromise on? I want to say community mm. and that community includes my team includes my whole ecosystem my partners abroad and the value within community is making decisions that 
are always in the best interest of the greater community. Sure. Right. I love that. Answer. I love yeah. that. And I think it's very similar for me, probably. What is one thing that Nguyen Coffee Supply does better than anybody else? We are a leader in the robust conversation. And that's something that I think that we really own and do really well and that we're going to continue to do. I like that. Sarah, it was a pleasure. Oh, like Honest, was. genuine pleasure to chat like with was. you. Um, we got a part two coming. Oh, for sure. But for, for now, sure. we're out of here. Thanks, y'all. Talk to you soon. Cheers.